We're going to start our transformation unit with a reflection. So in the box, it says in geometry, a transformation takes one figure and creates another figure. The original figure is called the pre-image, and the new figure is called the image. The image of a point P after a transformation is called point P prime. So some vocab, pre-image, again, that's say a triangle before you reflect it. And then the triangle after you reflect it is called the image. And to note the image, we put um, the apostrophe after for P prime. Moving down the page, it says a transformation that does not change the shape of a figure. So we're not changing the shape. We could be changing the size. So that transformation is called a similarity transformation. The shape of the figure remains the same. So in order for this to happen, we have to preserve angle measure. A transformation that does not change the shape or size. OK. Um, this one, again, did not change the shape. This one does not change the shape or size. That's called a congruence transformation. So this time, in order to keep the size the same, we have to preserve distance or length. And congruency transformations. So we call these, and the regions calls these congruency transformations, rigid motions. And I want you to make note of another term, and that's an isometry, or isometries, plural. And then last, before we move it up, it says one type of rigid motion is a reflection. And reflection is noted with the lowercase r, which I'll point out um, again later on in the notes. In a reflection, the pre-image is flipped over a line. to create the image. This line is called the line of reflection, which is the perpendicular bisector of each segment joining each point in its image. So now we're going to take a look at the properties preserved under a reflection. So um, let's take a look at um, the triangles to start. So as we said, in order to preserve size and shape, so a reflection is a rigid motion or a congruency transformation. So both angle measure and distance are preserved, or else the figures would be a different shape or size. Now let's look at the trapezoids. Um, we'll look at base CD and base AB. Those bases are parallel. When you reflect the trapezoid, over in this case segment MN, the bases CD and AB, or C prime, D prime, A prime, B prime, they're still parallel. So parallelism is preserved. And then collinearity, well, let's look at um, side AB of the triangle and let's put point P here. So A, P, and B are collinear. When you reflect, a prime, B prime, and P prime are still going to be collinear. So that is also preserved. And because the figures remain congruent, because reflection is a rigid motion, both area and perimeter are also preserved. And then below we're going to talk about orientation. It says that changes after reflection. So it says, notice that the vertices of square A, B, C, D are labeled in a clockwise direction. So let's take a look. A, B, C, D. Yep, clockwise. And the vertices of square, now there should be A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, are labeled in a counterclockwise direction. So let's take a look. Yep. Um, because the figures are, 
because the figures are mere images of each other, the orientation of the image has been reserved. So orientation is just the manner in which we label our vertices. So in the original, again, this is our pre-image. In the original square, it, they were labeled in a clockwise direction. And in the image, they're labeled in the counterclockwise. And it says below, reversing the orientation of a figure also switches the notion of left to right with respect uh, to a line of reflection. For example, in the pre-image, the square is to the left. Yep, square is to the left. But in the image, the square is to the right. So the notion of left and right also changes in a reflection. So let's look at the multiple choice question, which comes from the regions. As shown on the diagram, then when hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F is reflected over line M, the image A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, F prime, under this transformation, which property is not preserved? So because, again, it's a reflection, and a reflection is a rigid motion, meaning the hexagons are congruent, both distance and angle measure are preserved, and therefore the area. So therefore, the orientation has to be different. And if we take a look at how the original hexagon is labeled, that's in a clockwise manner. And then the image is counterclockwise. So you can see orientation has been reversed. So now we're going to plot some points in the coordinate plane. So why don't we take a moment, and I'm going to plot all of the points up here, and you plot the points on your paper, um, and then we'll come back together. So go ahead and plot your points. Okay, so now we can look up here. Uh, we're going to take point P in the first one, and we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So remember, the letter to know to reflect is a lowercase r, and the subscript is the line over which you're reflecting. So we're going to take P uh, right here, and we're going to reflect it over the x-axis. So the x-axis, I'm just going to highlight a section of it. So from the axis, we count down one, two, three. So then we're going to go up one, two, three, and here's P prime. Okay, so as we can see, we didn't move left or right, so that X value is gonna stay the same, and instead of going down three from the axis, we went up three. So there are rules you can memorize, but I don't memorize any of the rules because I just graph it on graph paper. Um, so we see the X stays the same, so the rule becomes X, Y comes X, and then we change the sign of the Y or negate it. So that becomes negative y. Now we're going to take q and reflect it over the y-axis. So here's q. Here's the y-axis. And from the y-axis, we count 1, 2, 3 to q. So count left, 1, 2, 3. And here's the image of q, or q prime. Remember, too, we were saying um, if you were to draw a segment that connected a point to its image, that line of reflection, which in this case was the x-axis, was right in the middle, which if you count uh, one, two, three boxes, so this segment, one, two, three boxes, is congruent to that segment, and it's also perpendicular. So the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector. Um, so let's check it again. Draw this segment. Is the line of reflection the perpendicular bisector of that segment? Yes, it's perpendicular, and it's also three units. So let's go back and write the coordinates of Q prime. So from Q to Q prime, we went right, left. We didn't go um, up or down. That stayed the same. So the Y value stayed. So X, Y becomes, again, Y stays the same. And then this time, the X is negated. 
So instead of being a positive 3, it moves to the left, which is a negative 3. So the rule becomes negative x, y. Now for these next two lines, um, y equals x and y equals negative x, I want you to take a moment and let's graph those first. So they both have an intercept of 0. So y equals x has a slope of 1. So up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Where y equals negative x is down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. So let's take a minute, take your ruler, and let's graph these two lines. All right, so y equals x goes corner to corner. Okay, and then y equals negative x, corner to corner in the other direction. So let's take a minute and label those lines. Here's y equals x. And y equals negative x. All right. Now we're going to take, let's use, I guess, what color haven't I used? Purple. So now we're going to take r. Now y equals x has a slope of 1. So a line perpendicular would be a slope of negative 1. So from here, say this point, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, doesn't go through R. But you get the idea of what that line's going to look like. So we're going to count corner to corner the boxes, because this would be a slope of negative 1. So one box, two and a half, a half, one, two boxes. Right here is R prime. So again, this line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector. So let's look at the coordinates of r prime, which are 1, 6. So if we take a look at here, 6, 1 becomes 1, 6. All we do is reverse the coordinates. Now let's take a look at y equals negative x and point s. So that's this line right here, same idea. This line has a slope of negative 1, so we're going to do a slope of positive 1 for negative reciprocal. So 1 box, 2 boxes, 2 and a half, a half, 1, 2. S prime is going to be right here. And again, the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector. So S prime has the coordinates for 1. So not only are they reversed, but they're also negated. So x, y becomes negative y, negative x. And then the last two lines are a reflection over y equals 4 and a reflection over x equals 1. So let's graph both of those lines. Now y equals 4 is a horizontal line passing through 4 on the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops, I wanted that to be orange. I'm actually going to undo that. 4. And then x equals 1 is a vertical line passing through the x-axis at 1. So here we are. OK. I'm just going to add arrows and label those. All right, our last two points. Uh, I'm going to grab green this time. First, we're going to take t. So t is right here. So from y equals 4, we go down 2. So we go up 2, and we're here, t prime. Notice that we didn't move left or right, so the x value is going to stay the same in negative 9. So if we started at this point, we go up 1, 2 boxes to get to 4, and then up 4 more from 2, we get the value of 6. Okay, so notice again from this y value of 2 to that y value of 4 was adding 2. So then add 4, or add 2 to 4, and you get 6. Same principle is going to apply to x equals 1 for w. So here we count to line 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So then count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here's w prime. So we didn't shift up or down. So the y value is going to stay the same. And to go from this 7 to a 1, we subtracted 6. So then 1 minus 6, right, we want 6 units left from there, that's a negative 5. And then it says note that the line of reflection is perpendicular to the line segment connecting a point to its image. 
So now we're going to construct the line of reflection. So first thing we do is we take our ruler and we draw a segment connecting any point to its image. So I'm going to connect C to C prime. You could have picked B, B prime, A, A prime, so on and so forth. And then we do the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So compass point goes on one of the endpoints of the segment. Oops. And remember, the big thing about the bisector is you want your pencil to go past where we think the midpoint is. Because we're going to draw two arcs that overlap. They should overlap, or else you don't have your radius of your compass large enough. All right. Oops. So now through those two points, we're going to draw a line. And it does not say what to label the line. We just need to make sure we include arrows as the line extends infinitely. All right, last two questions. Number three says if point A, which has coordinates 1, 9, is reflected in line L. So I'm going to sketch a picture. So here's L. I'm going to say A is right here. It's reflected. So do, 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 do. It'll be about here. Again, it doesn't have to be drawn to scale, and it says the coordinates of A prime are negative 7, 1. Determine the equation for line L. Okay. So one of the points we know that's on line L is this point right here, which is the midpoint of A, A prime. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the midpoint using the formula of A, A prime. Okay. So I'm going to add negative 7 plus 1 over 2. I'm going to add the y values, divide by 2, and we get negative 3, 5. Okay? Another thing we know, too, is that these two lines should be perpendicular. So if I know the slope of L, I can determine the slope of, um, or if I know the slope of AA prime, I know the slope of L. So let's calculate the slope of A a prime. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 9 minus 1, 1 minus negative 7. So we get 8 over 8, which is 1. So now for the equation for line L. I like to use the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Now the x1, y1 come from this point right here. So it's going to be y minus 5 equals, now the slope, if the slope of a, a prime was 1, the slope of our new line is going to be in the negative reciprocal, which is negative 1. Then x minus, and since our x value is a negative 3, when I subtract a negative 3, it turns positive. So I'm going to distribute and then add the 5. So negative x minus 3, add 5. So our equation is y equals negative x plus 2. All right, now the last one. Now the last one's pretty tricky. Um, we have to construct this time the image, okay, or the reflection of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. So what we do know again, is that the line of reflection is the perpendicular bisector of the segment connecting a point to its image. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a line perpendicular through each point, okay, that's perpendicular to this line right here. So we take out our compass, make this smaller. Okay, and we're going to put the compass point, I think that's the smallest it's going to get, compass point on C, and I'm going to move the pencil as close as I can to the line, and we want to draw, remember, the arc and the X for a line perpendicular. So there's the arc, and then we slide it to one of those points of intersection of the line of reflection and the arc to draw the X. So slide it over. I'm going to change color every time. I'm going to move to A, which I'll do in orange. So 
We're sliding this up to A. Okay, so compass points on A. And then I want to slide it down. Again, so it's just past the line. And I want to make that arc. Okay, and then the X. So I'm not changing the compass setting when I do the X. So arc from here, slide it over to here. And let's draw the X. And you can always take your eraser and get rid of some of these marks. So for instance, these arcs are really long. And all I need is that X. So I'm going to erase them. Erase that line I made up there. And then I'm going to finish now with B. OK, line perpendicular through B to the line of reflection. All right, so I'm going to slide my pencil up. Again, as close as I can. I'm going to draw an arc. And now the X. I don't need to start way over there. OK. So now I'm going to draw all of the lines in blue. OK? Just so you can see. So let's start with B, the one I just did. Or, I'm sorry, blue was the color I wanted. Now we should be good. OK, so there's the one line. Then one, let's do C first. And I'm not going to draw it very long. Now A should be just a hair to the right, and you can see that it is. OK. So those are all the lines, perpendicular to the line of reflection through those points. So now they have to be equidistant from the line of reflection. So I'll do this in pink. So I'm going to take my compass, and I'm going to put it on the point where the graph, the line, perpendicular line crosses the line of reflection. I'm going to line it up with point B to measure that distance. OK, I wanted that pink. Are you pink? started pink, but then it changed to blue. Well, it's going to be blue. OK, so um, I'll highlight that, though, in pink. So here and here. So there's B, and this is B prime. And you can see it's just right about where that X is. So now let's do C. And I should be on pink now. So make sure you're on the line that's perpendicular through C. You don't want to mix up the lines. I'm going to draw the arc, and then bring it down. It's going to be like a full circle, and you see it's just right there, again, right at where that X is. So here's C prime. And then moving it here, line of reflection, where it intersects with the line perpendicular through A. And let's make the arc there. Swing it around on the other side. And yep, it's going to be right there at that x. So here's a prime. All right. So yeah, this is probably this is probably the hardest one of the unit. So let's draw this now in green. OK. So let's connect a to b prime, or a prime to b prime, b prime to c prime, and then c prime to A prime. And there you have it. That's the reflection of that triangle through that line.